Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. It is Tuesday, March 26th. We're coming back at you. We ain't at a casino this time. No, no, no. <laughs> back at our cave. That's all right. All right, I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. Uh, this is Winning Cures Everything. It is podcast number 272, I believe. Uh, quick I think that's right. The, our many hour long ones, ago. anyway. We uh, this is two seventy two. I'm gonna I'm gonna shout that one out. I think that's what it is. You can follow us, of course, on Twitter at Winning Cures. You can follow me at Gary WCE. Follow me at Chris B Giannini. You can also follow the show on Facebook, facebookcom slash Cures Everything, or make life easy on yourself. Go to winningcureseverything.com. It's got everything over there. You can subscribe on YouTube. Subscribe on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, on Google Podcasts. Uh, Spotify is a new thing. I don't even know if you knew about that. No. Yeah. So, so we're on Spotify now. You can listen there. You can listen basically anywhere that you can get podcasts or video for that matter. So, Sweet. Yeah. So subscribe, comment, share the show out, tell your buddies about it. Uh, we always appreciate the support. Here is the rundown for tonight's show. We're going to do our Sweet 16 previews. And this is Tuesday, so we got a couple of days I got some numbers here and there that uh, that I have from memory. I'm gonna do my main picks on the Daily Show on Thursday, okay. but uh, but I got some picks for today. Uh, Nike paying players. We're gonna talk about Michael Avenetti and uh, him being what was the word? He he was charged with extortion of Nike. Yep. But then he came out and and gave all of his stuff that he had on them out anyway. So he he tweeted all that. Conor McGregor retires. Uh, I talked about that on The Daily Show, but you and I will get more into it. Rob Gronkowski, I talked about that on The Daily Show yesterday, and you obviously have a little more insight. So I would like to get your thoughts on that. Okay. And then finally, we're going to talk uh, at the end of it about Mike Anderson just for a brief minute. Uh, he was let go as Arkansas's basketball coach. The show, as always, brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They have got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. You can find more information about us at winningcureseverything.com. All right, Chris, let's jump in. Come on. Uh, Sweet 16 previews. Now, first games are Thursday. We got four games. Do you have a a favorite game of the Sweet 16 right now? (laughs) It's not provoking. No, I was just about to say, do I like any one Thursday more than I like the others? Um, I am personally super excited about the North Carolina Auburn game. That's that would be my favorite game, um, and that's on Friday, right? And that's on Friday, and then also my second choice would be uh, Houston, Kentucky. Both of those I like. I I'm excited about Texas Tech, Michigan. Oh no! I'm, I want to watch all of these games. Uh, yeah, I will all watch of these all are, of these are games. Great They're games. all going to be really good games. The, I guess the marquee names. What jumps out on me are, are the are the Saturday games. I think they did a good job of putting the best games on Saturday. I'm a little surprised. So Thursday they've got Gonzaga and I mean Florida Friday, State. Sorry. Yeah. So th- Thursday they've got Gonzaga, Florida State. Okay. And it's the first game of the night. Doesn't surprise me at all. Well, it kind of surprised me, if only because it's in Anaheim. So, the game is at 4 p.m. Okay. That's a little crazy for Sweet 16 games, right? No. They're not... Where it's played is irrelevant to what time it's going to tip off because it's all... We're we're trying to get a nationwide TV audience. Well, yeah. People who are interested in the Sweet 16 and in this tournament are going to watch no matter what time the games come on. We were at Tunica in a casino filled with people at 11 a.m. Oh, yeah. 11 a.m. Central. And we were there filled with people at midnight. Yeah, and they I mean, it was filled at, at 10 a.m. Like, it was filled yeah. an hour before. So, so the fact that it's at 4, 4 o'clock, 4.30, whatever, local time West in Coast, California. Like, trying to get people into the arena, that kind of stuff. Oh, God. The people that are there are not from the West Coast. I mean, you got a point that are, They are the fans of these teams that have flown out to support them. That's a, that's a very good point. That's you, a very don't, good point. you don't have the, the local guy that runs the dry cleaner down the road saying, oh, I think I'll go to the Sweet 16 <laughs> I game I think tonight. I'll go check this out. No. no that's will, not who's buying these tickets. I'll go watch this one. 
All right, so Florida State and Gonzaga. I think this the, has the this is the least sexy game on the slate, so it gets the first time. Slate. Well, look now, Florida State beat them in this spot last year. Okay, seventy five to sixty. Didn't I mean, say it wipe, wasn't going to be a wipe great the game. Floor with them. I'm just saying, based on the two teams, the fan bases of the two teams. Well, yeah, no, no, no. You're, this is the least sexy game. You are dead on about that. You are dead on Didn't about say that. It wasn't going to be a good game. I, you, look, I've been talking Florida State up like crazy. Well, that's and that's the thing. They are sixteen and two in their last eighteen games. Only two losses are to North Carolina and, and Duke. But Gonzaga might be on the same level with those no, two. No, Gonzaga's on that level. Gonzaga could beat them. Because yeah. that's the number one seed. Yeah. I mean you're you're They're right. The four you're right. Seed. They're not supposed to win this game. Um biggest thing, so in the first round of the tournament, three bet uh, the the best three point percentage. Was twenty five and seven straight up? Now it changed a little bit Hang in the on, second I'm round. Confused. What the team that had that shot the better three point okay. percentage? Okay, that was twenty five and seven straight up. Got it. The team and now in the second round it came back to earth a little bit. It was nine and seven for the team that had the better three point shooting. Uh, in this, Gonzaga sixty five is like they're thirty six point six percent. They're number sixty five in the country. At shooting three pointers, Florida State, thirty three point seven. They're two hundred and ten. So that's the biggest difference. Well, they play just a completely different style of basketball. Yes, and and that's the biggest thing here is the athleticism. Florida State has got ten, eleven, twelve guys deep. Yep. Uh, yes, everybody, I I would say everybody, uh, will be thinking about Gonzaga and this is revenge and oh they're such a good team and whatever. They're playing on the West Coast. We may see the same thing that we saw last year. Like, Florida State is really, really good. Dudes being dudes, man. I, I mean, they're they're just athletes. That You're right. They don't shoot the three-pointer extremely well, not nearly as, as well as Gonzaga does. Uh, but they're going to be really hard for Gonzaga to defend, I think. Oh, I, I agree with you Because 100%. Gonzaga hasn't, even in playing Duke, and uh, in the in the really good teams that Gonzaga has played, Zion is a freak athlete. But a lot of those other Duke players, they're they're great basketball players. They're better basketball players than than the Florida State guys. They're not better athletes. the uh, The line opened at six and a half. It went all the way up to seven and a half. Now it's back down to seven. I would say it's it's balanced out to seven. And I, I was wrong about the money. Eighty four percent on the side for Florida State. Yep. 60% of the money. So 84% of the tickets, 60% of the money on Florida State. Uh, that's That went a little different than uh, than what I was expecting it to go. Really? Uh, just a little bit. I, I thought that people were going to fall in love with Gonzaga because, oh, they're so much better this year and whatever else. But like, what they makes were one them, seed last year. What makes them so much better? This is where they got knocked out last year, right? Yeah, Sweet 16. Okay, then what makes them so much better? And it was on the West Coast again last year. I mean, they, they got they got a, a lottery pick that's, I mean, he's unreal. They've got the same point guard. They got the same issues that they had a year ago, which aren't it, it, issues it, against hardly no, anybody they're, else. They're a year more experienced, so that's a good thing. They, they've, got, they've got another key piece that's a lottery pick. That's a good thing. Yeah. No, I'm not saying they're not better, but but I don't know why it would surprise. I would think, the A, the way this tournament has played out, the overwhelming majority of dogs have covered. So I would think the trend will be in this round for dogs to be the most bet side. Yeah, this, the bet, second the round. The most bet side. The second round, the it was the first time ever that uh, that favorites went 16-0 and 0 straight up. I mean that's that's they crazy. won all those games, but they didn't cover all those games. No, they didn't cover all of them, but they no. they still but, won all. But of them. but you're talk we're talking about betting sides is what you yeah. just what you talked about that stat. Yeah, that that's only they, I mean, they the don't favorites, care about the winning or the loser. No, 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 you're no, no. Talking I'm, about the, the point spread. I'm with you on that. Um, so Gonzaga number one in effective field goal percentage, uh, number one in uh, adjusted or adjusted efficiency offense, mm-hmm. number sixteen defense. I mean, I, I like teams that are top 20 in both of those. Uh, Florida State, 28 in offense, number 10 in defense. Defense for Florida State is where it could get very interesting. Yes. 
Uh, if I had to lean a way, I mean, I got. I was going to say Florida State. I would like to call you out a little bit on not making picks on this show. You're going to wait for your daily show? Come on, man. man we do a show together. I'm not done with my – do oh, you have your picks? Yeah, I got my picks. I'm going to pick every one of these games. <laughs> and if, I hadn't gone through the numbers yet. And if I go 0-8, oh that's part of it. Okay. Well, Hang then that I, thing up. I'm not scared of it. Then you know what? I'll write these down. We'll Come roll on. with that. We will roll with that. And you then, got your own daily show. They're going to big league me. Oh, that's I'm not okay. big leaguing you. I'm, I got I it. I swear to I you. I got it. I'm calling uh, you out. I just hadn't had enough time to get so, all my numbers down. That's okay. Make a pick. So, I – I'm going to take gonna, Florida State. I'm going to take the points. I'm going to take seven points. I hate the fact that there are 84% of the tickets Don't care. on Florida State. Don't care. I'm a roll Gonzaga. That's fine. So I'm, I'm going to take the, uh, the I don't think Vegas seven. ever cares about the number of tickets. What, do, what does Vegas money. care about? They only care about the money. Yeah, and it's 60-40 Florida State they, in money. That's right. It's only six, But 60% teams win all the time. At 60%, Vegas makes money because – they lose so little on that game, and they paid out so much that they they with the vig on the other side, they're just fine. Okay, they're just fine losing a sixty percent game. All right, I'm a roll Gonzaga on that. We'll go ahead as and the favorite. Bam. Uh, let's see. Let's next one up. Da, 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 Purdue da. and Tennessee. Purdue and Tennessee. Yep. Yep. At six twenty nine p.m. Purdue plus one and a half here. Um. This is another one of those that I thought people were going to jump all over Purdue. Yeah. I mean, it, it one team up struggled as, to beat the other, and one team yeah. blew somebody out. We've talked about that. And it's and, and Tennessee struggled to beat a Big Ten team yeah. that Purdue really didn't have a whole lot of problems with. Yeah, in the regular season. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, give, me, give me your feel on this. I mean, what are you, what are you thinking? <sighs> so, I've got in our bracket and everything, I mean, I've got Tennessee going all the way to the Final Four. I I really like the Tennessee team. I love Rick Barnes. I love what he's doing there. But man, I, I'm kinda and I and I said this when we started the bracket and me and you started looking at these teams. Purdue's one of those teams where if they're hot and they're making shots, they 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 can beat a lot of teams. They can beat teams that are better than well, it's, them. It's kinda like Auburn. I think if Auburn's right and hot, Auburn can win the whole thing. I yeah. don't know if Purdue's right and hot if they can win the whole thing. The, per, my Purdue feeling is, on them two are a little different. Purdue is basically UConn with Kimball Walker. Okay, where the whole one, rest it's the, right. That's the difference. The whole rest of the team can play defense. One dude and then he carries just it for them, and with Auburn, it's three or four guys that shoot the lights out. Plus, Auburn's got a coach that I think. He's good enough to win a national championship. That's yeah. the difference. Not a knock, not a knock on Purdue at all. It's just the difference of how I see those two teams. But yeah, Purdue. If 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 I'm riding Tennessee, still Purdue scares me. They do I can scare understand me that. because they are shooting so hot. Tennessee's got a great offense, but but I don't know Tennessee slowing anybody down. Yeah, I mean, you're right. What's the over-under on this game? Have you looked at that number? Uh, over-under is... I'll probably bet the over I've just for here. fun, but I bet it's massive. Uh, 146.5. It's not as high as I thought. Not, that's, not that's, that high. that's high, but I thought it would be in the 50s, 150s. Yeah, 146.5. Um, here is the... So, one, you know, we talked about Rick Barnes. They went 0-2 against the spread. Yep. But they got it to the Sweet 16. They made it. Now, in his last 12 NCAA tournament games, one... Ten and one against the spread. Yeah, but this spread is. Let's see, those spreads Minuscule. were different. Those spreads were big numbers. This is. Are we down to the dick cutting here? Now we're down to yeah. one and a half. Well, it opened at one. It's now minus one and a half. Sixty-four percent of the tickets on Tennessee. That doesn't bother me. Eighty-seven percent of the money on Tennessee. Oh. That's a lot of money, man. I would not have seen this to be one sided. Do you I think? Agree. Do you think it's the fan base? Because Tennessee no. obviously is a massive no, no, fan no, no, base no, no. compared to Purdue. I think one, this is a lot of people thinking Carson Edwards is not going to go off for forty-two again. Uh, it, I, okay. Tennessee's got the better athletes. I'm going to agree better, with that. the better team all year. I don't think he's going off for forty-two either, but but he did against Villanova. That's for sure. I mean, that was whew, that was pretty spectacular. I, I thought Villanova was going to beat them. That was pretty spectacular. Yeah, it was. It was a lot of fun to watch. I'll tell you that. Uh, I mean. It, I so there's two lines of thinking here, right? <laughs> yeah. You always bet against Rick Barnes. 
I never do. And the, well, in the NCAA tournament, like it, okay, it yeah. Makes sense, I mean, right? I haven't really bet on so it anymore. One ten yet. and one in the last twelve is like all right, yep. but you also always go against the guy that got really hot that hasn't been hot. But at the, so like right now, there's not really a good bet on this. I know, I know how I'm gonna bet. I'm gonna ride with Tennessee. The line is so small. I'm going to take them, and this is going to be my argument for how I like to, to bet trends of I like to pick the team that narrowly escaped death over the team that beat the hell out of somebody. Normally in that case, though, like the public jumps on, I, on I that agree. Other side. That's what made it so weird. I was not expecting 80% of the money to be on I mean, Tennessee. That doesn't make any sense to me. Other than it is early, it is Tuesday, and by Thursday I could – Way level out. Yeah. If you're a sharp and you're waiting for this number to hit two, you could just be waiting to pounce for the the opportune time um, because it is early. I mean, you're you're entirely right. I mean, it's, I, I can't explain that. I would think conventional wisdom. I would have thought this would be very close to fifty fifty. The way Purdue played and the way Tennessee had this massive collapse. Ken Palm has Purdue seventy five to seventy four. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna roll with you. I think I'm gonna go Tennessee here. It's so close. I mean, if Ken Palm's off two points, and the that, game's I mean, different. They've, they've been off two points. You know, I mean, we're not asking them to be crazy wrong. We're well, asking his, for so, a foul that 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 doesn't go your way, and the other team gets two free throws. I mean, that's all we're asking. His for. Uh, so with Ken Palm, he puts like uh, how much. He believes in the pick or whatever. Okay, it, by a percentage. That's right. He's got fifty-one percent. So yeah, so it's just, just like n- yeah, it, yeah, it's, it's just right there. It, and we're both. Thing, I've got, like I said, I have a feeling that I would rather listen. Rick Barnes' team got an ass chewing after their game. Oh yeah, and and Purdue and the Boilermakers, they celebrated a guy. They 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 lifted somebody on their shoulders and crowned him. Yeah, that's. It's it's just a different feeling. I am never, and this is how I'm wired. If you jump my butt about something, I promise you, I'm going to be better. If you pat me on the back, I'm going to smile and I'm going to enjoy it, and I'm probably going to half-ass it after that. Okay, but it's just it's just my basic nature. These people are obviously athletes, far more competitive than I ever have been in my life. It's my logic. I think is really close. I think the number's good. I'm really shocked. I would. I want to see where the money and the tickets are. Just Thursday. I don't need to be right at game time, but just like just Thursday early at noon. On Thursday. Thursday at noon. I'd like to see what that number okay. is. Okay. Okay. Next game up: Texas Tech awesome. and Michigan. It's 9:39 p.m. on CBS from Anaheim, California. Ken Palm has got it 62 to 61. Uh, let's see. My bookie has actually got it at Michigan minus two. two that's what I'm seeing. Uh, I will go on and tell you, I'm going to take Tech plus two here. All right. Okay. Now, this is the battle of just styles and teams, right? Yeah. Like, so far. Well, number one uh, effective defense against number two effective effect, defense. That's right. Th- like, these are these are coaches that run a system, correct? Yes. S- Tennessee, Purdue, Gonzaga, they just fill the bucket up. They score, they yeah. score, they score, they score as much as they can. And and Florida State, just freak athletes. Then you get to this game, and it's we're coaches, and we manipulate chess pieces to move in a certain way every half-court possession. Yeah. I mean, every half-court possession. No, you're, you're right about That's that. That's what I find pretty crazy. It's uh, – all right, so – if I gave you the choice of which team you think shoots a better, like which team is ranked higher as far as three point shooting, I would I would assume Michigan. I might be wrong on that, but I would have guessed Michigan. Texas Tech is number sixty six in the country. Okay, I thought that might be the Mich- answer because Michigan is one fifty. Wrong. Whoa, that's a big difference. Yeah. So and it's, no, right, no, no, it's no, not no. it's not a huge difference no, right, because let's, okay, I hate that number. It's thirty six point six percent. And Michigan is 34.9. Okay, because you could be 1% different than the other team, yeah. and there's like hundreds of points separating you. Yes. So, okay, so they're virtually the same is what you're telling me. 
No, not exactly. Well, I mean, 34.9 30... to 36.6, I mean, they're almost two percentage points better. All right, 34.9 is almost 35, and then 36 and a half. Okay. Okay. I, I'm with you. How, how is that not, like... The... one one point what... seven percentage points as far as the amount of three-pointers over an entire season? But we're going to play one game. I know. That's it. Gonna... That's, that's the difference. You take the season-long stats... You yeah, that's the only up, thing that I that throw I'm in the about. garbage because we got one game. We're gonna play 40 minutes. What how a, many of those shots you gonna get off? I am curious. And how that. many times did both of those teams play other teams that played this kind of defense? The uh, the three point thing is not why I'm taking Tech. No, no, no. I'm I, taking I, Tech because you, of the uh, you've been their, all their over. Te- you've been all over Texas. Yeah, Tech. their their defensive length is ridiculous, and I don't. And while Michigan has played. Michigan State and and all these other teams in the Big Ten, mm-hmm. they have not seen anything like this. No, it's it's completely different. I'm going to take Michigan. I got them going to the Final Four in my bracket. Um, I, I I really like them. I think they're just an insanely. This game will be won from the bench, and I'm not talking about backups. I'm talking yeah, about, I'm talking about men wearing ties. Okay, you agree with I, that? I, yeah, I mean, it, we don't. Re- so we think that Chris Beard is like ridiculously good, right? Yeah, but we know that's it. That John Beeline is. I'm, ridiculously I'm, good. I'm gonna go with a guy that has done it. Let's see many times before. Texas Tech was five out of sixteen shooting threes in their last game. That's thirty one point three percent, and they still beat Buffalo by twenty. And Michigan, who played, did they play Saturday? Yeah, Michigan played Florida on Saturday, and they shot 7 out of 21 for 33%. So, it ain't going to be three-point shooting for either one of these teams. It's going to no. be keeping the other team from I was about shooting. to say, what was the total score from Buffalo and Florida? Because I'm going to bet neither one of them scored a lot. Florida scored 49. S- Buffalo scored 56. Yeah. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Texas Tech won 76 to 56, and Michigan won 64 to 49. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Beeline. I think he's a world class coach. I think he's a world class coach. I could believe that. I could absolutely. And believe I'm always that. gonna lean that way when I when you're when making think, any bets. When I think well, when I think two teams it might be pretty even. All right, last game on Thursday because we uh we have let this roll forever. Yeah, we can roll. Um, Virginia and Oregon line is eight and a half. You like Oregon. I've you liked, had Oregon in the Sweet 16. I've liked Oregon all along, man. I thought Wisconsin was going to catch them early. Uh, they are on a 10-game winning streak I, right I, now. I told you that. I thought this Oregon team is not the Oregon team that played through the regular season. No, they're no. Just, actually, not even close. Saturday, February 23rd, one, there was no chance of them getting an at-large. No. No chance. No. And they had to win the championship. They went from 67th at Ken Palm. Mm-hmm. Now they are 29th at Ken Palm. This this is why you've got to be careful looking at year long stats when you when you lose a guy and then you get the guy back and he's a world class player all those numbers don't they mean the crap. Guy back. The guy's not back. I don't know. I Did don't you know. not watch the games? I've watched all their games. <laughs> You're talking about Bowl Bowl, right? No, I'm talking about who's the. There was another dude that was hurt. Shit, see, I don't know these guys' names well <laughs> enough to talk about this stuff and sound intelligent. <laughs> I, I, we talked about this last week, and I thought you I were talking that. about no. uh, Bull Bull, like the seven foot five guy. No, no, he's a guard. Who's the dude that's filling up the bucket, man? The man, I couldn't begin to tell you that. They're point guard. Yeah. Here, I'll tell you that right now. Uh, Peyton Pritchard. But I don't think he. Nah, man, he played all nah. thirty seven games. Anyway. Lewis King, uh, anyway. he played thirty games. I know this. This isn't the team that we start the season with in Oregon. No. I, mean, I watched them play through the Pac-12. I didn't watch any of the regular season. not going to pretend I did. I watched them play through the Pac-12. I watched them dominate a really bad conference. This conference is that I didn't respect and appreciate at all, and I don't think they deserved it. Well, nobody nobody should. No. Right? So, I mean, that's the way it goes. Uh, the fun thing about Oregon is they've got Peyton Pritchard, who is two. They got Will Richardson, who's six five. You know, he's a freshman. And then they got Lewis King, who's a freshman, 6'9". 
Paul White, who's a senior, 6'9", and Kenny Wooten, 6'9", as a sophomore. They got some three 6'9 dudes that all got wingspans just out yep. to who knows where, and, and that's their depth chart over the last five games. Like, that's their 52% of the time. That's Those who's guys are on the court. It's unreal. Just unreal. They've, they've been pretty incredible to, to watch. Now, now we get to Virginia. Now we get to Virginia. Virginia is just a horse of a different color, man. Once they got the Gardner Webb stuff out of the way, they uh, look. They should have blown Oklahoma out of the water. They look like the best team in the country yeah. last weekend. And they and last they weekend have been. they put on the best display of no, all the number one seeds. Number two most efficient offense. Number three most efficient defense. defense yeah. uh, number six in the country in three point shooting. I mean, they are just – oh, and they and they also give up the second least three-point percentage. That's right. They People only shoot 27.8% threes against them. If you take – That's I, bonkers. I should, I should have had this figured out. After that Gardner-Webb debacle in the first half where they just turned the ball over every other time they touched yeah. it, man, I don't know that they've got five turnovers after that. No, they – The uh, second half of that game and then all of, all of last week's game. Their, their turnover they, percentage – They just – they just what they did against Gardner Webb is an, an anomaly. Yes, they just don't turn the ball over. They protect it so well. Number fourteen in the country, and they take it away from you yeah. better than just about anybody. It, it's it's remarkable. I've been riding Oregon. I really want to see Oregon win this game. I don't think Oregon's going to win this game. Now, if, I think if you're going to bet it, I, I, yeah, I'm like, okay with taking the points. Well, and see, it's eight and a half, and pretty much all the analytics out there have. Virginia winning by double digits. Yeah, by ten. I I wonder if another week off, like if it cools down Oregon at all. I mean, I who knows, right? Because I, 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 I can't figure that out, and I'm they, not going to try to play the mind game of are they are they going to be ready for it? now? If either one of these teams step on the court and they're not ready to play, the other team will blow them out. Well, yeah, I mean, of, the, of course, the caliber but, of talent is just too good that you can't play a half that you're not ready. I mean, if if I had, mm. so if you had to bet, you'd take Virginia. Man, I might too. Yeah, I mean, any, I I just think this is so the good. best team in the country. When they are when they are right when they're rocking. Me and you've had this conversation. They they do everything well. Yeah, and they do nothing badly. It's the reason I like North Carolina before the season started. I thought they they do everything well and they do nothing badly. Eight and a half just feels like a lot of points, but. It does feel but like a lot. But for this team, kinda... like it, they're also, what is it, like number two or three in the country as far as against the spread percentage this year. So, Well, they get up so big and they're so suffocating. And then when and if you ever do score, you can't catch up because you kind of get to where you got to foul them to stop clock because yeah. you got to score with the clock, you know. And then they hit free throws and then it's just over. Yeah. I mean, it's I mean, they just – It's a fantastic team. Which, uh, which way are you rolling? I'm I'm gonna take Oregon in the points. All right, Oregon plus eight and a half. I don't feel good about betting against Virginia. I don't feel real good about laying eight and a half, but it's just a lot of points. It is what it is. Hoping for some dog love. All right, here goes Friday as we'll roll through it Let's fairly try to roll quickly, through and then we'll and then we'll roll through these other things yeah. fairly quickly so that we can get out in the next uh, twenty minutes or so. Um, let's go through Friday night. I'm going to draw my line so we can keep track of all of our stuff. LSU. First game is LSU and Michigan, Michigan State. State. Man, this I is at uh, Capital One Arena in Washington, D.C. Hate that these two teams are matched up against each other so and these quickly. Are, these are both you boys. I know. I these know. are both you boys. I, I, I'm going to tell you this. This is not a match. This is not a match. LSU without Will Wade on the sideline is the – it's not a surprise. It's the least – well, co- the worst coached team. I'm going to use that phrasing. In the tournament, and it's not yeah. close. I mean, it's just not measurable. There's, there's no, no there's unit, talent there. There's no, oh, no, no, but coaching wise to to draw up X's nose plays when you need a timeout to stop a team, or when you need a timeout. Yeah, to, we got to score on this basket. Tony to, Benford to is the, not going to. It's just not happening. Yeah, it's not going to happen. If LSU can keep this close, it will be strictly off of talent athletes. Just. Straight just, talent, just and and what they've pure, learned throughout the year. That's right. That's you know? right. Try to try to kind of realize what you've learned and put it into effect. Um, I mean, look, Michigan State. 
they've had a few injuries all year long. That's right. Like, can't forget about those. But they have played insanely well all year long. Uh, I mean, if I had like it, if okay, so I'm I'm gonna roll Michigan State minus six here. I'm gonna roll Michigan State minus. All right, six. so we're we're doing the same thing. I'm not gonna say the, I'm not if betting, I had to bet no, anymore. I'm not. I'm I'm listen. I'm riding with Izzo. You, you know how I feel about that. I'll I'll live and I'll die by it. Yeah, I can understand that. Six doesn't scare me. LSU just doesn't look right at the end of games. Because that's when the coaching comes in. I mean, they, they should have beaten Yale worse. You, they should have beaten Maryland You can play 30 worse. minutes of basketball and let the athletes do whatever they want. But the last 10 minutes of the game is put in the hands of the coaches. Yeah. It slows down to a point where it's put in the hands of the coaches, and that's when we have no prayer. And and in the first two games, it didn't necessarily matter. No, you just beat – thankfully, we had Maryland – up so big that when they make this tremendous run at the end of the game, they just couldn't quite catch. Yeah. That's it. That's it. And we made one unbelievable play at the end of the game to, to win it. Yeah, which which wasn't drawn up or anything. It was just – No, it was just Jermont a dude Waters. being a dude. Yeah. That's right. Just being an athlete, go be better than them. Auburn and North Carolina. Uh, this one is at the Sprint Center in Kansas City, Missouri. This the uh, the, the total opened at 160, and it got bet up to 164.5. Bruce Pearl was on, I think, Paul Feinbaum the other day, and he said, bet the over. Yeah. Just bet the over. Because they're going. He's out to it For him to win, it's got to go over. I'll tell you this. I would go under on this. Well, it, that's fine. Auburn gives up crazy points to really good offensive teams. North Carolina has got the rebounding advantage, size advantage. The Auburn wins against teams that don't know what to do with their pace. But North Carolina does their pace, and they're bigger. Oh, like no, North Carolina right. does no. everything that Auburn does, only better. Only better. Hey, they don't shoot the three better, but yeah. Um, That's a – you know what? I do wonder about that. There's no There's no way they shoot the three better. Well, Because Auburn hadn't been hot all year, man. Well, I guess you're right. You're right. Auburn is yin and yang. When they're right, we've talked about that. When they're right, yeah. you're not stopping them. There's no defense for that. And when they're wrong, they're bad wrong. Oh, I was – nope, I was way off. What way I off. Give me some numbers. 38.2% number 16 <sighs> in the country for Auburn. 38.2%. North Carolina. That's scary. Number 68 in the country, 36.6%. That's so scary, 38%. Man. Yeah. Uh, let's look at uh, uh, What's average, this line? What's this line? average Five? height. Average height. Oh, North Carolina should kill them on this. 78.5 <laughs> inches. That's number 18 in the country. Auburn is 76.6. That's not bad. Number That's 206 not... in the country. Okay, so that two Remember, this inches... is you're averaging like 12, 13 kids. Kids, yeah. They, so, don't play as a... they shouldn't do that. You don't play all 13 of those kids. No, like, if you're average... average... Yeah, but if you're... But one, one 5'11 walk-on that's a manager, but... Technically qualifies as a player, pulls that number way down. I mean, you got a point. You know, what do you want me to say? I, I, I can't. I can't do anything. I don't. About I this. don't understand why why they keep up with numbers that don't matter. You do all this work to give us great information, not you, but but these these groups that we follow, and then you give me an information that doesn't that like you're literally taking stats it, it really from a doesn't guy matter. that has never touched the court in his life. Well, here, give you an idea of this. Uh, this is their most used lineup, 58% okay. of the time over the last five games. Let's go with that. Auburn, 5'11", 6'3", uh, Samir Doughty, 6'4", Horace Spencer, 6'8", uh, Chuma Okiki at 6'8". Now for North Carolina, yeah. Kobe White, 6'5", Kenny Williams, 6'4", Cameron Johnson, 6'9", Garrison Brooks, 6'9", Luke yeah. May, 6'8". Yeah, no, this is drastic difference. Yeah, yeah. It's uh. It's not close. It's it's really not. It's really not. Athleticism not, not close. Not close. As not much close. as I love Bruce Pearl, man on the bench, it ain't close. North Carolina minus five is the line. Uh, Ken Palm has got this. Uh, North Carolina eighty-two to seventy-eight. So, Ken Palm's got it within the four. I think North Carolina's defense, their length, is going to cause problems for Auburn. I think this moment is a little bit big for those kids. I mean, this is the first Sweet 16 they've made in uh, who knows how long. And North Carolina has been here 
All the time. All the time. Now, I mean, they didn't make it to this weekend last year. They got hammered by Texas A&M. But I don't think that that's like a SEC thing. No. Right? So, this Auburn team and that A&M team were two completely different teams. I'm going to roll North Carolina minus the five here. So, my opinion on this, A, I'm going to ride with North Carolina and Roy Williams minus five. My opinion is it won't be close. North One Carolina, way or another. North Carolina will either beat them by double digits or they'll get beat flat out, just lose. The same way the Kansas did. I I think, well, maybe not that bad. But <laughs> I, think, I think North Carolina's – Quite a bit more pride and class yeah, in we'll how see. they play to keep up, but 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 I think I think this will not be one of those where the last second shot will determine the spread. I, I think this spread will be off by five to ten points, one way or the one other. way or the other. It just depends on who gets hot. If if all because if Auburn is right, I've said this a bunch of times and I'm standing by it. If Auburn is right, they can win this thing. Yeah, because I agree. there is no defense for the amount of three-point shooters they have being hot and stopping them. Yeah, I think you're probably you right. You can't guard it. And they shoot from so deep, even if you defend the three-point line, it doesn't matter. They're just going to take two big giant steps backwards, get open, and shoot it. Okay. Okay. So, uh, and if they're off, North Carolina will kill them. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean, it'll be a bloodbath. They won't be close. The money on this, by the way, for, uh, for LSU Michigan State, 67% of the tickets on Michigan State, 60% of the money. That's um, close to even. Da, 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 da. For Auburn, North Carolina, 53% of the tickets on North Carolina, 56% of the money. So about in, right in the, the 50s. People are, people are uh, feeling like uh, Auburn is, is pretty hot right now. And they are. So uh, next one up is... Our ACC matchup. Yeah, Duke and Virginia Tech. Whew, boy. I, I am more excited about this game than I probably gave credit for when talking about the other two games that I was excited for. I got a – so, it's Duke minus eight. That was the starting line. That's right. Now it's down to seven and a half. Seventy-six percent of the tickets are on Virginia Tech. And then do you see this number right here? That can't be right. I mean, I wouldn't imagine it is. the The stats that I have we're, we're in front getting of me, this information from VegasInsider dot com. Vegas Insider it says ninety nine percent of the money. One percent of the money is on Vatek. Yeah, ninety nine percent on Duke. that number wouldn't have gone down if if one percent of if if Vatek had one percent well, and Duke had ninety, it would have un, unless they were warning more people to bet on Duke and they really believe in Virginia Tech to just win the game. Like, Vegas does this with certain oh, matchups. Oh, yeah. We've seen the money. Man, in college football, we see it. That's the only, that is the only sport I've ever seen the money all going one way and they move the line the other yeah. because they're trying to get people to bet the other way. So, if, if you're trying to get more people to bet on Duke because you don't buy into them, I mean, drop that line another half point. Jesus, that's scary. You're going you're gonna to set Zion loose. That, and that's world. what I'm worried about is like, okay, I really like Virginia Tech in this spot. I do too. I'd like them better with eight than seven. But I, I kind of like them. I kind of like Duke here because. I, I just want to know why the money moved. I want to know why the line moved. That not, we we need to find a couple other uh, websites and uh, and do some other research because that can't. It just can't be ninety nine percent. I've never seen that. Vatek has a big enough fan base. <laughs> that it I mean, unless be. this is just LeBron James saying, I'm going with my boy Zion. Let's see. The Action Network said uh, Sweet 16 odds. Heavy money moving Virginia Tech uh, Duke betting line. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Those, According to the Action Network's public betting data, spread tickets are quite balanced with the Hokies garnering the slight majority at 54%. Now, this is all across all online That's and right. all Vegas sports books, et cetera. However, those 54% of bets on Virginia Tech account for a whopping 81% of actual money wagered. Okay. So, so that this says, says that, 80% of the money is on Vatek. Yeah, it says 80% is on Virginia Tech and not on Duke. So Vegas Insider, it's just wrong. It's just a typo. Somebody's messed up something. So they were saying... This might not be accurate, but the 99% is definitely not accurate. That's definitely not accurate. The so, line is what Duke number minus seven. 
Now that I know Ken that Palm 80, has got it uh, by five. Now that I know that eighty percent is on Vitek, I feel bad. Yeah, seventy-five to seventy. Duke, according to Ken Palm. Um, like I'm, I'm gonna roll Duke here. Okay. Like I, did, God bless. I've taken a lot of favorites here. I don't like it. Give me Vitek. Give me Vitek. Let me do it. I'll go with the public. That's okay. You here's, are a here's, man of the people, aren't you? Here's all I know. I know this. And, and, and I sent this out in a slurry of text to our group text for us and the Westlock guys immediately after the Duke UNC game. Are you UCF? UCF game? Yeah. You can tell me all you want. All you want that R.J. Bell is going to be R.J. Barrett? Barrett, yeah. yeah R.J. Bell is the gambling guy. Straight out of Vegas guy. <laughs> yeah. R.J. Barrett. It's an honest mistake. R.J. Barrett and, and the rest of the crew at Duke are okay. all going to be lottery picks. They're, they got three top ten picks not named Zion Williams. You can tell me that. And I'm going to tell you, if I was a general manager of an NBA team, of one of those 29 other teams not going to get to take Zion, there is no way in hell I would touch any of those kids. Ever. I don't I, I, think they will be I don't think they will be the best player on their team for the rest of their life. They might not be the second best player on any team they play on for the rest of their life. But these guys are all buddies with Zion. They they all wanted to go play together. That's why they all went to do But but they like, play with no heart, no intensity. We have over a month of games where it's just them without Zion. And they look pedestrian. Yeah. They look average. They don't look impressive at all. And then you throw Zion in there, and it takes a Herculean effort to beat Central Florida? Yeah. I mean, this is a team that Memphis this beat is, by 20 like, this is, a week This ago. is Zion literally putting the entire team on his shoulders. So either, either these guys are not anything close to what they are touted as, or Coach K has fallen so far off the cliff of not being able to coach guys up and get them prepared. And I would I would venture to say that these 18-year-olds have been classified in a realm that they're not really at more yeah. than I would to say a man that I've watched my entire life be great at what he does has all of a sudden stopped being great. Well, I'll tell you this. The difference between what we always knew Coach K to be and, and what Krzyzewski has turned into is he – he jumped on board. He used to, you know, poke fun at Calipari. That's right. He hated the one and done. He hated the one and done, and now he has. Oh, he's balls deep. Yeah, he's fully embraced it. And by doing that, you don't get these guys there for that long. So the team chemistry that he used to be able to build, the development that he used to be able to do, he can't do that anymore. How so, come? How come Cal can do it? How come Self can do it? How come the other guys that go after one and dones can do it? K can still do it sometimes. I mean, the year that he had Jaleel Okafor and whatnot, I mean, they won a national championship. They were a bucket away. Like, it, same thing that happened to UCF this past weekend also happened to Duke against Kansas last year. So, like, they were that close to a Final Four last year with Marvin Bagley and that bunch. And it's – look, he can they end have, up getting on. this team to the, a Final Four. The difference – they might win the whole thing. Yeah. The difference is, is Zion is being graded higher than – any prospect since LeBron James yeah. to come out into the NBA. Yeah. we. You mean to tell me that these games are this tight, this early in the rounds, and even in the ACC championship game? And, and yeah, you won that thing. You you won it all. But you're, you're barely beating teams that have far less talent than you. Yeah. I mean, it's not close. Yeah. I mean, they had right. a big tall kid. A big, a big monster on the other team. Okay. You couldn't game plan around that? Take one guy out of the game? I mean, he, look, he went out in the last 15 seconds, and that was enough to get R.J. Barrett to get a uh, an offensive rebound and then – An offensive foul? I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, just, I just don't see those guys playing with any type of intensity or, 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 or just this 
killer instincts that it takes to be the best player on an NBA roster. I think they can play in the league for 10 years. They can be role players. But that's not what you're drafting with third overall, with fifth overall. You're trying to get the next guy that can be the leader of your team and and lead your franchise for the next 10 years. Not a role player that would be a good piece if we can get a max guy to sign here. Yeah. You know what? I'm I'm excited about NBA draft time, which, by the way, NFL draft, one month away from yesterday. So pretty uh, pretty pumped about that. But the NBA draft stuff, I'm, I'm curious to see who do we think are going to be the guys that, that are leaders, that are franchise players. Because like you said, I don't think R.J. Barrett and uh, uh, Cam Reddish and those guys, I don't think those are leaders. I don't think those are franchise guys that are going to change the fortunes of they'll the They'll never make an all-pro team. I, I don't think they'll make an all-NBA. That. It's, it is easier. Like, John ja Morant, that's a leader. Oh, that's no. That's a dude. No, but, but we're not having a conversation about no, that. No, I know. There's I know. That's a, I'm but, not kidding. I might. If you gave me the keys to a franchise, right? if the Grizzlies said, Chris, we got the first pick overall, and we've botched this for so long, you make this pick, I'm not even thinking about it. I'm just taking Ja knowing over Zion over Zion knowing that kid's going to play for me for 15 years okay I, listen Zion could be the second coming LeBron but if Ja turns into KD did I really mess that up yeah but if he doesn't turn into like the best point guard in the in the league like or at least one of them. Okay. We have like, history. We have history. Now we're going to get into a different tangent. We have history where two elite players came out of an NBA draft. One was a big man, and the other one was not. Both times the big man came out first. Both times the big man was a colossal flop. I'm just telling you, this yeah, is how your body – you, I, I know he's not – I know he's not these guys. I know the big man thing is yeah. It's Zion he's not is, Greg Oden. I get it. I get it. I'm just telling you the history says it ain't so bad taking the little guy. You think Taco Fall goes uh, goes first round? Oh yeah, I'd take him first round. Jesus, yes. I mean, he hasn't been. Are there 29 as... other players in this draft that you would take over him? I mean, because not I me. think when you get into the 20s. You're just looking at dudes, man. You're not even looking at like great, like guys. You're just seeing who's a freak athlete. And and talk about, like the he's learned to play basketball. Yeah, he like he moves better than Yao Ming ever moved, ever. Yeah, no, I agree with you on that. I know the game is not about big men anymore, but um, but let's let's say he falls really late, and you're like the Milwaukee Bucks, and you say, you know what? I just want a guy that when he boxes out, he takes up half the court. He is a senior, right? Yeah, he's a senior. He is not listed. Like, even first or second round in uh, in NBA draft. I would net. be shocked that somebody wouldn't be enamored enough to take him. I mean, he's massive. They, now, they do have Bol Bol, who's 7'2", 235 from Oregon. That's different. This guy's... This guy's... Seven foot six and the biggest thing you have ever seen in your life. Yeah, Jay Billy says listed. he swears he measured him at seven seven, but he's ashamed of being so big because he feels like he's a freak. You think people are scared to draft him because of all the problems the big men have had? Why would you be afraid to waste like a twenty eighth overall pick? I mean, I wouldn't. How many players in that late round have, or in the second round are, have ever mounted to anything? The Grizzlies got a crap load of guys drafted in like the top seven picks. Yeah, that ain't worth a damn. Couldn't make a G League team with him. You yeah, mean, I you, mean, you, you're right. You mean you're if right. Milwaukee said, uh, hey, and we obviously know Giannis likes big men. When he had the, the all-star draft, he drafted his first four picks were like four centers. Yeah. Like, like, hey, you like playing with big guys? It's the 28th pick overall. You want that big SOB? I got it. You can have him. I'll go get him right now. Uh, let's talk about Houston and Kentucky. Oh, let's uh, And, and this will – I we have to go. It. No, we'll end it. We'll end have it. To go. All so, the other stuff we were going to talk about, we'll talk about later. We'll talk about it next week. We apologize no, for, it's okay. for we getting roll. your hopes up, Come but on. we got things to do. Houston and Kentucky, the line is two and a half, I believe. I'll just turn it uh, Here it is. Yeah, two and a half. Two and a half. Um, Kentucky favored. No P.J. Washington, we don't think. 
We still don't really know, but Cal has been acting really weird about this. So you know. I don't think Cal knows how to act, and so he. I well, think I think his default is awkward. PJ Washington has gone to specialists and done all these different things, and you know that Calipari knows everything that's going on with his basketball program, right? That's right. So it, all the crap about I don't know whatever he was asked what over the weekend <laughs> or like in one of the post game press conference things or whatever. Uh, they said, you know, what do you know about PJ? What about that? I mean, PJ Washington had to wheelchair himself into the arena. Like, are you kidding me? But they, they asked him about it and he said, and I quote, well, it's still a, it's still a foot sprain. So far as I know. Why preface it with that? He, he's gone to two specialists. You flew him in late. Your team doctors have seen this. What everybody is saying it might be is uh, uh, the plantar fasciitis That's thing. Right. And so it might be like a, a hairline fracture on the top of his foot, and he may not be able to play for this whole tournament. Oh, no, yeah, he's going to be out for a while. And so what I saw from some of the, the sports book directors in Vegas was with P.J. Washington, it is Kentucky minus 5.5. Without him, it's Kentucky minus 2.5. I've got Kentucky in my Final Four. I like Houston to win the ball game. I'm gonna take Houston plus two and a half here. And I'll probably buy the point up to three, but I'm gonna. I'm not just trying to go against you, but I, I love Cal. God, I love Cal. I'm gonna go with Kentucky. Another dude. I mean, he's not playing. I, he's just not playing. It's it's not the PJ Washington thing no. that that drives me away here. I, Houston is a really really good team. They are chaotic on defense. They they hit threes at a crazy rate. I mean, Houston, uh, let's see, right now, number 113 in the country in threes. Uh, Kentucky, 95. I mean, it's kind of the same thing. But Houston's defense against threes, number one in the country. They give up 27.8. Kentucky's defense, number 178. So, I like Houston here. I think, look, these are both really, really good teams. Uh, Kentucky on, number seven at Ken Palm. Do we have any kind of numbers other than those rankings for that? Which part? Houston, the difference Houston gives up 178 in the Houston the gives up 27.8% from three. Okay. Kentucky gives up 34.4. Okay. You do realize that Kentucky had to play Tennessee twice. Auburn, they've played twice. twice. Like, like, they've. They've played teams that shoot the ball way better than any team Houston has played all year. So that's going to inflate their their three points given up. I think if Houston had to play Auburn twice, Tennessee twice, LSU twice, well, Tennessee I think, doesn't I think shoot. the amount of three-pointers that they would have given up would gone quite a bit up. Yeah. I think, I think that number, I don't know, man. the fact that they're that far separated, I think these two – the reason this was my second favorite game, I think these two teams are a lot alike. I think they're super athletic. I think they're both really well coached. I think they're good good teams. And and I I think the fact that they're separated so badly is because Texas and Oklahoma ain't shooting threes like that. Mississippi State was the first SEC team in the three point percentage uh thing. They're number thirty four. Uh da, 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 da. I thought we said Auburn was higher. Auburn has to be. Oh, no, Auburn is number 16. Okay. Yeah, I was about to say Auburn. Yeah, but Auburn way. against Kentucky this year, I mean, one of the games they only scored 50-something points. Yeah, because when they're off, And got beat by off. 30. That's right. And so. But I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm I, just, I see where you're coming from here. Some of these numbers aren't equal. Here, let's roll by. If you looked at Pat Oregon, Oregon's numbers against teams. Or 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 Gonzaga's num- defensive numbers like who's dudes playing? Because they're not in the SEC playing these teams. They're not in the ACC playing those teams. I was going to pull up the AAC, but I don't know what is listed under. Well, here. I know this: <laughs> Memphis Memphis wasn't shooting a lot of threes this year. Okay, let's see. Oh, it's under it's listed American. That's what it is. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Three point percentage. 
Houston shot thirty nine point one percent from three. Cincinnati thirty four. Temple thirty five point three. UCF thirty four point five. Memphis thirty one point eight. SMU thirty two point zero. Tulsa thirty six. Memphis bad. But then you had East Carolina twenty nine, et cetera, et cetera. So it falls off. Yeah. Um, I like Houston here. That's fine. You can I like don't Houston. like Kentucky in this. I just spot. didn't like that number. So, so I, I can understand that. You can make stats say anything you want to say. That's why I try to call it out when I think they're wrong. That's well, and, and again, they're not wrong. <laughs> it's just wrong. they're. You can skew them however you want them. I'm going to measure a bunch of five eight kids that are never going to play, and then I'm going to tell you how long this team is. I'm just saying. Okay. The, the the number wasn't really wrong on that. Give me Cal. <laughs> Kentucky minus two and a half. All right, that is our Sweet 16 preview. We will talk more about McGregor and Gronk and Nike paying players. Oh, that'll be a lot next week. That'll still be Mike a story. Anderson, uh, Mike Anderson fired by Arkansas to close out with this. SEC, four open jobs now, possibly five if Will Wade uh, is gone after the, the federal trial stuff. Uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, I don't know, but that's five out of 14 gigs. That's crazy. That's a lot of jobs opening up. I don't know. I don't know. All right. You know what to do. Go to winningcureseverything.com. Follow us on all the social media stuff. Subscribe to the podcast. Chris, we'll be back in next week. See you guys. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.